This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering, news and articles. Hello, welcome to this special edition of CMDR Dex. We're going to unbox the new Magic the Gathering Commander's Arsenal. Is it worth it? Can you find it? Well, let's take a look and see what we got inside. Are there hits? Are there misses? What about the foiling process? What about the counters, the oversized cards, the sleeves? There's so much packed inside. Let's dig in right now. It is the Magic the Gathering Commander's Arsenal. So here we go, the actual unboxing. Let's get into it and see what kind of goodies are in store for us. So just looking at the box, looks like it's rather large. Um, we have this weird sleeve that's holding it all together. Let's get that off of here. Now on the front we see Command Tower, the Mimeoplasm, Duplicate, Sylvan Library, the new sleeves, some of the new battle marks, and the new life counter. So, Pop this off here. All right, so it's a felty material underneath. The plus and minus battle marks. And it looks like we have the cards packaged together, at least for the uh, regular size magic cards. Uh, the life counter. We have the planeswalker symbol on it, which is what they're using a lot nowadays. And yeah, moves pretty smooth. Not sure if this will take a place of a pair of dice, but who knows? Maybe. Maybe we'll get used to it. Uh, going in further, we have the Magic the Gathering Planeswalker sleeves. Foily sleeves, which I think is the first time they've done that. Looks like they're Ultra Pros. Um, not sure the exact millimeter size on these, but probably similar to the new Ultra Pro sleeves they've been putting out. And we pop this up. We have more of the battle marks. A commander's arsenal fold out, which is the new command tower art. Has a poster on one side. And then it looks like it breaks down some of the oversized legends, all the oversized legends on the back. And we'll be getting to those here shortly as well. Alright, some more sleeves. I think it's at 120 overall. Here we have the uh, oversized art cards with Azusa up front. And nothing else there. Let's take a look. So nothing too exciting otherwise on the box. When you put it back together, looks like this. No real dividers in it, so it'd be awkward to hold cards with. Uh, but still looks attractive, I guess, if you want to use it for decoration. Uh, <clears throat> so we bust into the battle marks, really. I don't know how much use and play these are going to get. Um, you know, most people just use dice if they want to try to show plus one, plus one, or minus one, minus one. So not sure if this will see much use. Uh, I really don't suspect I'll be using it that much just because they might be hard to keep track of as far as, you know, not losing them. So we have the battle marks. And let's go ahead and first bust into the oversized sleeves or the oversized cards here and see how they look. Alright, so the first one is Azusa Lost But Seeking. Uh, the foiling on this looks really nice. I can't tell if it's similar to the From the Vaults. I don't think that it is. Um, but still looks really crisp and nice. Next we have Brian's Stout Arm. Originally from the Lorwyn block. Uh, Glissa the Traitor. The newer Glissa. Looks really nice with the Frixian symbol there. A uh, really nice oversized Goto. His uh, skulls and the horns and the tusks, they all look pretty good. 
Grimgrin the Corpseborn from Innistrad. A really nice Karn Silver Golem. Uh, they did put this in the uh, Relics from the Vault Relics. So there is a smaller foil version that's also this new frame. Uh, we have Karthus, one of the probably more popular dragon commanders. Mael. The Sliver Queen, which is the first time in foil, uh, and they got away with it because it's on the reserve list by printing it in the oversized format. So if you want to play oversized Sliver Queen, you have one in here for you. And last but certainly not least, we have Zur, one of my favorite commanders. And uh, looks pretty nice. Still not sure if I'm going to use this. I do use the foil oversized Skullbriar and Zedru that I have, but primarily because I don't have smaller foil versions of them. So we'll have to see if I actually decide to use the foil Zur or not. Alright, so let's get into the actual magic cards and see what we have. So in this pack, the Sylvan Library pack, we have Library up front. Uh, the art is similar to the original Sylvan Library art. Um, I don't think I like it as much, um, but the foil is nice if you are looking for a foil Sylvan Library. Next up, Ristic Study, one of the best commons, I guess, in the format. Um, usually very hard to find this in foil. I think it's something like a $30 foil uh, for the original from Prophecy. And uh, it looks pretty nice with the new border. Next up, Scroll Rack. Um, I haven't seen this see a ton of play in Commander, although uh, it does see, you know, play in decks here and there. Uh, I guess the popularity really took off in Legacy, where you could use it with the Miracle cards. Um, but uh, yeah, I like the new frame on it. It looks pretty good. And then we have Vela the Nightclad. The first legend we're going to get to. She was from the Plane Chase 2012 release. And yeah, it looks, uh, looks pretty nice in foil there. Not too much going on here with the art because it's so dark, but still looks good nonetheless. Alright, now we have the duplicate pack. And Duplicant, definitely a EDH slash Commander staple. Um, if you don't have a deck that has a lot of ways to remove creatures, this is one of the most effective. And there is the new art on it, which uh, it looks pretty good. I like the original art a lot, but uh, this new art is also pretty nice. And then here is the money card of the set. Lure Retainers. Um... I think I'd be hard pressed to call this a staple in Commander. I myself have only ever seen it in two Commander decks, and those are both decks that use green to abuse interactions with Survival of the Fittest. Um, so that way they could get you know a Commander or a Legendary creature they know they wanted, throw it in the yard, fetch this up right after it, and then get it right into play. Um, not sure if I'm ever going to use it. Uh, they do sort of like the clonish art. So, there you go, Lord of Retainers. The next legendary creature we run into, Maelstrom Wanderer. This was also from the Plane Chase 2012 release. Double Cascade, creatures you control have haste. It is in the rug wedge. Um, the foil around the head uh, with the fire in the body and these green tendrils out here. Really looks amazing. Um, might tempt me enough to actually want to build one of these decks. We have the new Art Mind's Eye. I haven't seen the art here yet on this. This looks really nice. Um, doesn't do a whole lot in the foil just because it's uh, so dark with the dark reds. Um, but it's hard to find in foil, so if you can get your hands on a foil Mind's Eye with the new art, it should be just as good as the original. Uh, next we have Mirari's Wake. This is the Pro Tour art for this foil. doesn't have the Pro Tour uh, relief, obviously, since it's not. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty nice in the foil there. And definitely a staple in white-green decks. Moving on to the Mimeoplasm pack. 
Hemoplasm was, I believe, one of the most popular generals from the Commander's box set that came out last year. It looks absolutely stunning in foil. Um, not sure how much the foil will be going for. And if you can pick up a single of this and you're a Mimeoplasm player, probably a very good investment. That looks awesome. Next up, also from the Commander's box set, we have Chaos Warp. Uh, this is the original art, but it looks very nice. And just an upgrade for the Commander's non-foil to foil. Here we have the alternate art Decree of Pain. Uh, sort of a <laughs> kill all the angels and the soldiers type of thing. Decree of Pain, one of the better black removal cards, and it was also very hard and difficult to find in foil. So since they've put this out in this set, that's going to give uh, at least a little bit more access to foil versions out there for people who want them. We have Desertion. This is the original Richard Kane Ferguson art, which I think is amazing. I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, the foiling on this looks very awesome. And, uh, yeah, I'm really liking the Desertion. Finally, in this pack, we have Diao Chan Artful Beauty from the Portals 3 Kingdom set. Another legendary creature. Uh, I've seen her in a couple of Commander decks. Um, she's pretty fun. I don't have any deck in mind for her right now, but uh, having a foil one of this might actually make me want to build one around her. All right, and let's get to the last pack, which is the Command Tower pack. So here we have the alternate art foil command tower. Uh, you may be aware they did a judge foil version with the original command tower art. Uh, I think I prefer the original art better, but I don't have one of those as of now, so this will be slid into one of my decks. And I'll actually be going over what changes I'll be making to my decks personally here shortly. Um, but command tower, easily a commander staple, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Dragon Lair Spider. This is in the Plane Chase 2012 release. Um, underwhelming is a polite way of saying what I think about this card. I've never seen it in a commander deck. Um, I can't think of a single one of my decks that it might fit into. Initially, I thought perhaps it might go into my Red Green Wart deck. Uh, since it does create tokens, maybe I can use those tokens to conspire. But... Awkwardly, the tokens are just green instead of green-red, and you get 1-1 one, one green insects instead of spiders. I don't know why they couldn't have made maybe 1-2 spiders with reach, or even 0-1 oh, spiders with reach that were green-red. Maybe they just didn't want to make the tokens for it. I don't know. Um, but either way, Dragon Lair Spider, I doubt I will ever see this in a commander deck. Not really sure why it's in here. Maybe just this filler. Now we have Edric Spymaster of Trest, one of the more popular two-color commanders to come out of the Commander's box set last year. Uh, the foil on this looks really awesome, especially around his uh, armored parts on the shoulder, his gauntlets, even the uh, flying spy glasses that he has. Uh, pretty popular green-blue commander. I know a lot of people playing him, so uh, I would recommend you can pick this up if you can find it, the foil Edric. And last, Kalia of the Vast, one of the other very popular commanders from the Commander's box set. When she attacks, put a big fatty into play and beat face. Uh, the foiling on her looks really nice as well. So yeah, if you are a Kalia player, hopefully you can find this uh, somewhere after all the boxes have been ripped open. And uh, there you go. That are That is all of these smaller cards. And... Uh, in one moment, we'll be going through, seeing which of these cards I'll be adding to my decks and which ones will be sitting on these sidelines for now. All right, and we're back. So, Kalia of the Vast right now. I don't have a Kalia deck. I don't see a place for her. She's going to stay out. Uh, Edric, I don't see a place for him in any of my decks right now. Maybe as a build around later, we'll see. Dragon Lair Spider, I've already said, is not going anywhere near my decks. Command Tower, this will be seen play. We'll set that aside. Uh, Diao Chan, Artful Beauty, right now, not going to see play maybe in one of my red decks shortly, or in a deck around her. 
Uh, right now I don't see a place for Desertion. The only other card I can see maybe cutting would be Spelljack, but Spelljack gets me pretty much any spell. So right now Desertion, that's going to stay on the sidelines. Uh, I will be using the Decree of Pain. We'll set that aside as well as the Chaos Warp. Mimeoplasm, I don't have a Mimeoplasm deck, so right now he's going to sit on the sidelines for us. Marari's Wake is definitely going to go in a deck. Mind's Eye, although it is a staple, is not in any of my decks right now, and I don't know a good place for it. So for right now, Mind's Eye is going to stay on the sideline, along with Mouse from Wanderer, since I don't have any rug decks. Uh, Loyal Retainers, not going to go anywhere near my decks right now. Duplicant, I will be sliding in. Vel the Nightclad, she's on the sidelines. And we will be using the Scroll Rack, as well as the Library. Ristic Study, although it is a staple, is not in any of my decks, so right now this will be sitting out until I can find a suitable place for it. So let's get into it. Skullbriar, initially I had Living Death in there. I do think that for Skullbriar, Decree of Pain is going to be better because I want to cycle it more than I want to hard cast it. And uh, sometimes I'm just playing against decks that refill their graveyard really quickly, and Living Death is not that great for it. So, Decree of Pain into Skullbriar for Living Death. Next up is the Sylvan Library. Uh, I do have an Italian Sylvan Library in my Silvos deck. Uh, the art, I think, on the original is so much better that I think I'm going to go with the foreign black border for Silvos. So Sylvan Library will still see play. It's going to be swapped out in my Sigarda deck for now. Scroll Rack, that sees play in my Zedru deck. This is just going to be a straight up upgrade. Uh, I do lose the Heather Hudson Signature on my original, but I do gain the Pimp of the Foil. So we're going to go with that upgrade for now. Uh, also from my Zedru deck, we have Chaos Warp. This is going to be just a straight one for one upgrade from the non-foil to the foil version. Next up is Duplicant. Uh, I don't actually have Duplicant in any of my decks because the removal is okay for most of them, but I am going to go ahead and slide it into my 8.5 Tails deck, removing Revelark. Revelark tends to see a lot of hate, and I don't have any way to really abuse it, like with Karmic Guide and Sack Outlets. So Revelark always dies, never works out that great for me. In comes Duplicant, maybe remove one of their big guys and give me a bigger beater. Also with Sigarda, earlier we saw the Sylvan Library. We're going to go with the Wake upgrade from the non-foil to the foil there. And then the last decision is the Foil Command Tower for my Xur deck. Uh, the Filter Lands are probably my least effective or used lands in my Xur deck. So the question is, do I cut the Sunken Ruins? Do I cut the Fetid Heath? I'm not cutting the Command Tower because I don't have a foil one, and I wanted to keep the Xur deck as foil as possible. I recently cut Flicker Form, so the white is not as important for me. So I will be cutting Fetid Heath for the Command Tower in my Zura the Enchanter deck. Thanks for watching this special edition of unboxing the Commander's Arsenal set from Magic the Gathering. Thank you for watching, and as always, please subscribe and favorite.